You're listening to the one of us.net podcast network. Have a, be a lot more on everyone's radar if they called it what it really is the Idris Elba <laughs> between us because isn't that really what the plot of this movie is oh most gosh. people will be okay with that yeah no I like Martin and I are talking about after this movie and we're like going honestly if it came down to a point where you had to choose between someone else and Idris Elba you'd be before you could even finish that sentence you'd be like Idris Elba yeah I, just, I, just, yeah. I can't see a you know this is the most like obvious attempt to make him like you know the romantic leading man and you know test those skills and he passed oh he like, was oh my amazing. gosh yeah i mean he's idris elba he even when yeah. he's in a shitty movie he's still idris elba you're still like yeah you're like amazing we love yeah. you so much we want you to be every geek character we don't care yeah. what it is you can be you could play wonder woman and no one would complain no, no, no you're completely <laughs> right because like the two actors in this movie renee uh, no, uh kate renee winslet Zell- i think no, renee zellweger kate winslet no. No, well, renee zellweger is like happen. kate winslet le- if she had lemons injected into ah, her face okay oh, <laughs> kate winslet and idris elba like they really make this movie more than what it should have been yeah oh it's called the mountain between us by the way not yeah. the idris elba between us the yeah. performance is <laughs> between the writers yeah, as near as I can tell, I don't think is this, this is. A yeah, this is a novel. Yeah, it's of course a novel. It's, a novel. It's, not, it's not a true story. They play, you'd think it was at first, right? Because like, this seems like the sort of like survival really? story mm. that someone would go, you've oh. got it to. It might be influenced by stories. Yeah, yeah, to I'm me, aware. it reeked of like an Oprah's, Oprah's Book Club. Oh, no. Show, like, once it got to a certain point. Yeah, once it got to a certain point. Oh, really? But before that, I was like, this could be a real story. Uh, for yeah, me, it was like from the beginning, I thought this is like a. This is so like a novel. I, I yeah. knew when it was yeah. wasn't real when they didn't stumble across a frozen soccer team. <laughs> that oh, that yeah. was when okay. I was like, no, because <laughs> you go up there in the mountains, there's fucking dead soccer teams all over the fucking place. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not getting too, that too, reference, too, but I'm gonna have to look. You never seen a live? No, I've avoided that movie. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> because, like, I just don't want to see people die. So I'm like, no, I don't want to watch that. You don't want to see people die? You watch movies where people die that you I don't want to see time. people die slowly. I want to see people die in big explosions with the American flag in the background. Okay. And it's Michael Bay. Yeah, uh, that's... <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that, but I am going to uh, go... Oh, my God, I love well, no wonder Chris you watched Baywatch twice. Uh, I, I am going to go into what this movie is actually about. Uh, the idea is... is <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a boot, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> Uh, Idris Elba and Kate Winslet are both in an airport where their flights to Denver have been canceled. They both desperately need to get back. He's a surgeon who has surgery in the morning, important surgery on a little kid he has to do. She is going to get married the next day. They're both like, fuck, what are we going to do? And then she comes up with the idea, hey, I heard you saying how desperate you were. I'm desperate too. I happen to know, I found out there's a guy who has owns his own single-engine air, aircraft here. We could <laughs> hire that guy, and between the two of us, we could afford the flight to Denver <laughs> to get there, played by Bo Bridges. Oh, my God. So they're like, oh, okay, Bridges. sure, that's, that's a great idea. Guy? The Stargate guy. Yeah, he was in Stargate. The fabulous Baker you, Boys. So guy. you hear Bo Bridges, <laughs> and what you think is the Stargate guy. That's high honor for me. I love Stargate. Okay. Uh, right. Anyway, okay. so of course there's no movie if the the unthinkable doesn't happen, which is basically he has a stroke midair, which is like immediately almost gave me a stroke thinking about it. Like Jesus Christ, can you yeah. imagine? Oh, yeah. And the plane crashes into the mountains. Miraculously, everyone but him survives, you including the dog. the dog, who is the real star of this movie, as far as I'm concerned. The dog, this, also known as Levity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the dog also, aww. There's yeah. lots of those moments here. This, this scene's getting a little too heavy. I de- it's getting a little too heavy. De- Put the dog in. I desperately <laughs> needed the dog for this movie. I needed We the, did need the dog. dog. And he did it. Ruby also is like, they, you know, they go back and forth. And like, I'm alive because of you. I'm alive because of you. You yeah. know, the dog's like, fuck you. I learned a cheetah that you guys could kill yeah. so you could eat and stay alive. You're alive because of me. The dog, every time he disappears, he's gone off and killed something and ate the whole thing. <laughs> like, he's, uh, yeah, you're not you're even sure. How is he alive by the yes, end of the movie? Exactly. Oh, you're completely right. Like, I didn't even think about it. But, yeah, like, he... He is a plot device because he brings them to, hey, you may have missed this this handy part of the story. Yeah. We need you to get to Act Three. So yeah, she's her leg is is seriously injured. Uh, he's fine, but but doesn't hurt the fact that, like I said, he's a surgeon. He's a, he's a medical doctor. He knows how to how to do the right stuff when it's needed. Which of course comes into play multiple times during this mm-hmm. film. That as long as it was just a survival film. 
I was kind of with it. I was yeah. like, okay, this is exciting to watch these mm-hmm. things. You know, mm-hmm. oh fuck, like it just keeps being new. Oh fuck, situations. And you're like, wow, that's really exciting. <laughs> and then <laughs> the thing happens ba, 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 that I'm like, ba, ba. I was really hoping you weren't going to go here, but oh, I but knew the, that you were. Enough. But the way they do it is good. Uh, I, I mean, the it's scene not, is good. It's not intolerable when it when it becomes a thing yeah. because of that. Not really. till, but it's not yeah, till. That, like the movie decides to redirect in yeah. its twenty minute or so epilogue. Oh my god! And, and go like, oh, now we're going to pretend like that was the most important the aspect thing. of this whole film. We're we're the draw drama to now. It's like, a Nicholas Sparks movie. Yeah. All of a sudden. You're not wrong, but let's not zoom past the chemistry during um, a few of those scenes. It's like. Y'all can't convince me y'all didn't do something. Oh, yeah. No, no. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's something going on there. Two incredibly fine actors. They are. You know, and, and it's very a pleasure attractive people. To, walk, to watch them work together. Oh, it yeah. It really is. I mean, that's yeah. this movie wouldn't have worked in the slightest mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the strength of those two yeah. actors. If it was Cameron Diaz and Idris Elba, no. I don't think that would have really worked. I mean, Idris still How goes along. A little Idris goes Denzel a long Washington way. Cameron Diaz. About Denzel that? still, because yeah. Denzel has his takes at this point, And he's so, <laughs> here's the thing. Denzel is so Denzel at this point. He can't play these roles the same way Idris Elba can because Idris Elba is famous, but he's not Denzel. Yeah, Denzel has gone full Denzel, and that's an issue. You, like, you uh, never go full Denzel, and uh, he did. Yeah, like, he I watched um, oh. the Magnificent, Magnificent Seven the other day, Yeah, and I love that movie. I think he does a great job, but it's definitely a Denzel archetype. We that he's playing. Manchurian Candidate. He's not that Denzel in that movie. Well, that was one of his That was 2004. Yeah. 2004. Like, you're talking uh, about Devil in a Blue Dress territory. No, that was like, well, that was even before that. But, um... Yeah, I'm saying, but you're talking about, before he gets to training day, he's not full Denzel. Guys... But- Sorry, yeah, okay. sorry, sorry, that's, sorry, that's another sorry, podcast. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on all day about Denzel. Oh, well, I, I can tell. I'm just like, <laughs> what is happening right now? We Denzel don't Washington have... isn't even in this movie. <laughs> we don't have many, okay? Yeah. I got to know the, the one, two, three. And Idris of them. hasn't been in enough films yet for us to have an Idris rating scale of like whether or not yes, he, he went full well. Pacific Idris. Rim. Is that full Idris? That's, that's full like Idris 11. Elba, like. Okay. It's like Pacific right. Rim wire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes down from there. It goes down from there. Where does the uh, Stephen King one fall in now? Uh, I, he was oh, we're not talking about that, right? No, okay. we are not. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> we're driving Chris crazy. Yeah, that's all right. I'm having a good time. The crosstalk <laughs> between Chris. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, uh, I just, it, it almost seems like so, such a shame because I was at about like an eight for this movie mm-hmm. until about the, maybe the beginning of the third act or so. I was mm-hmm. like, man, I'm really liking this movie. I think it's, I mean, it's slow, <laughs> but it's very exciting. And this performances are so good. I missed but, the opening. How was, they said that. Oh yeah. Was, you didn't come in until like almost the <laughs> halfway traffic, point. But yeah. Well, yeah. Like I heard the, I heard the plane crash. Was, okay. The plane crash itself oh is very gosh. impressive. That was scary. so yeah. great. Like, I mean, yeah. It's still yeah. not the best one I've ever seen. Mm. I mean, I definitely, there were ones I would rate higher. But the camera but work I thought good. was really great. The way it panned around. Yeah, it was a new way of, sh- of yeah. shooting it, for sure. I've yeah. never seen it done just like that. Um, yeah. And like I said, there's plenty of other really exciting moments in here. There's a whole bit with a, uh, a puma, I think, or a jaguar, Cheetah, mountain jaguar. lion. I yeah, can't, one of those. Snow leopard or certain, yeah, certain, the American big cats, I can't tell the difference between yeah, any of them. Oh, mountain lion. Yeah. That's <laughs> 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 actually really exciting and well done. And you're yeah, like, yeah. and there's that moment you're like, you motherfuckers better not have killed that dog off camera. Or <laughs> <laughs> I will stop this movie and turn it around. Well, they need the dog. This is that kind of movie. They need the, the dog's going to make it through no matter what. Yeah. Like if you mess with the dog, Brian Salisbury's going to come out of nowhere and look the screen. <laughs> I think many of us would, especially in a movie like this, where you're like, God damn it, we need that dog. If yeah. it's like, he'll get upset if it's like some dog you've never even met before, yeah. or if it's an evil dog, he'll even get upset. Like that Golden Circle, he probably got upset. He probably with, got, with got upset. Robot dog. Got upset at the like... end of Cujo. You're like Brian. <laughs> there were thirteen dogs in. Cujo. Yeah. And they're all trained. Actually, several of them died during the making oh, of it. Uh, oh, no. Well, actually, not several. I'm sorry. No, that's I was thinking of something else. One did, but it wasn't because anything they did. He died of bloat, which is very common oh, for okay. St. Bernard's. But oh, anyway. Uh, but can, I, can I just say how I really like how this was shot, the cinematography? Uh-huh. And mm. I like how when you have movies where people are stuck in the mountains, the cinematography can do a good job at putting you in the right headspace for the story it's trying to tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, the gray, very bleak. Not a lot of light. And when they do have light, it's only to illustrate the threat of the wolves. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one, there is light throughout it, but it's not it's not glaring. Like, you still have 
a bit of a doubt, are they going to let them through? But if you watch something like uh, Kamiko the Treasure Hunter at the end when she's in Minnesota and going through the forest, that is dark and foreboding. Yeah. So the cinematography sort of lends, let, lets, the, lets the viewer sort of understand visually where they're going. I think yeah. that was really well done. And they're not, you know, the only occasionally is there a storm going on. The rest yeah. of the time, it, the weather's mm-hmm. fine. They just, it's December in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. Just, And they're, you're like, what the fuck are you going to do? It doesn't matter if the weather's bad or not. You're kind of fucked. The yeah. Vickers didn't want to give them another storm. And I was like, they, they got enough shit on yeah. their plate already. Well, I like that they sort of kept it encapsulated. They didn't go, there's a wolf tracking up. So you got that that clock. Well, I kept waiting for them to go with the wolf. But I, I was, was waiting like, on it too. Mm-hmm. But I guess that you already had the bound line or whatever. I was like, okay, <laughs> we, we 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 already covered that part. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, which isn't to say it doesn't hit like a lot of the same notes. These films, trapped in the ice, <laughs> the snow many. things that they hit almost every single time. But it, like I said, it's so punctuated by these good performances, mm-hmm. some well written dialogue, a nice sort of uh, subtext that slowly builds mm-hmm. of uh, stuff about their characters and who they are. The quiet storm. Yeah. Uh, the, the quiet storm. The quiet storm. Are you NPRing me? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's like an old like R and B, uh, like romantic music sort of thing. Is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, half the I, time, never, really. I never heard that. Oh god! With you and your Michael Bay and your <laughs> I don't even know you anymore. Well, uh, speaking of music, though, the, the score was nice. It was understated, but it was well. It was used well. It was very understated. Yeah. Uh, by Ramin Djawadi. I think he did Bell Circle Galactica. Uh, he does the score for Game of Thrones. Ah, yeah. okay. Amongst other things, Iron Man, he won a Grammy for Prison Break, Westworld. Yeah, so pretty, pretty dude's pro- working. Prolific guy, and this was directed by Hani Abu Assad, who actually uh, got two Academy Award nominations for previous films for his film Paradise Now, and then for Omar, which that one I did see, and it was really I heard good. About Omar, it was, it was yeah. quite excellent. And you mentioned the cinematography, which is by a very experienced uh, cinematographer named Mandy Walker, who's mm. done films. Like Jane got a gun recently, which I thought was great. Hidden mm-hmm. figures, oh, she did hidden figures. Yeah, huh? Australia, which isn't a great film, but looks gorgeous. Looks gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. So I'm an Australia defender, but yeah, well, that's, that's, three that's a different podcast. Well. Uh, of course you, <laughs> yeah, are. of course I am. Yeah, <laughs> I hate like, Romeo and Juliet. See, Sorry, I'm the guy who loves, loves every Baz Luhrmann film except that one. Even see, I couldn't defend that. And movie. I, I see, I don't like Romeo and Juliet. I don't like it. Oh, Romeo you're Juliet. just wrong. But I do love Moulin Rouge. Well, everybody, look, you have to. You, you don't have a heart if you don't love Moulin Rouge. No, no, lots of people hate Moulin Rouge. What? Yeah, you know this. No, what? <laughs> Martin and Corey despise it. That's right. That's from do. DoubleToasted.com. Those guys, they hate it with a deep, an abiding passion. I can, but knowing them, I know why. Well, <laughs> true. I, I, I understand why. <laughs> but I, yeah, back to how between. <laughs> we keep getting off track. Honestly, there's not that much to say here. I mean, honestly, without spoiling it, and you've probably already pretty much guessed mm-hmm. whatever spoilers yeah. there were, but I don't want to actually spell it out but let's go into final thoughts frank just get us started you know what i i feel the opposite of you in a lot of ways that i wasn't that excited by all the plot moves you know every you know going into this you know whenever i did see something on twitter or still frame of something as an advertisement i thought okay that's the point when that happens that's the point when that happens you know Mm. i could sort of spot their next moment of peril or all the hardships they'd face but um it's this film is so well acted, and mm. it's such a pleasure and a gift to see these two actors working together, um, especially him. I think he's just he's the heart and soul of this film, and she's um, you know she's great. This is not going to be one of her most memorable roles, but no. um, you know she's great. She's Kate Winslet, who incidentally is getting more and more stunning as she gets older. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. I she, feel she's I mean, an uh, amazing actress, and just one of those actresses is just a pleasure to to, to see. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. And uh, Bo Bridges, I will say, Bo Bridges is now like he's for me after seeing this is he's the George Kennedy now. <laughs> like here. You see him on an airplane, you get out. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah, That's another reference to Elliot's like no idea. I get that one. Oh, Airport you know that one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Joe Paterno? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that Joe Paterno? Is that his name? I don't know. Uh, I don't Anyways, remember. it doesn't matter. But uh, no, this technically, this um, on a technical level, this film is so well made. The music was great. And it was, it, for, in terms of like survival stories or, you know, fans of the genre that the spoiler might reveal um you know this will tick all the boxes this is a nice sort of bridge into award season from the summer you know, i was thinking film. the same thing when yeah. i was watching it yeah um yeah there's just you know there's reason enough to see this film even if it is you know predictable at times um god i guess i'll, I'll give this a solid like seven 
out of 10 um, dogs who just make it through everything better than the humans. Yay, dogs. <laughs> Yay, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Elliot. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed this movie a lot more than I thought I would. I saw the advertisements for it, and I liked, well, just from the advertisements, how it looked. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go see this, and I you know, signed up for the screening. And admittedly, I came in late, so I missed a good chunk of the beginning. So I'm going to go see it again just to get the full experience. But from what I saw, it was just really enjoyable. It's it's one of those rare date movies that I feel like you can watch outside of a date. So it's definitely designated for like a date movie or like a we want to watch a drama and watch a survival thing. But it's something that if you're looking for a movie to go see on like a dreary day, or just watch because you want to put something on and enjoy it and be be assured you're going to enjoy it. This is the movie. It has great performances. It has good cinematography. It's just it's just a it's a pleasure to watch. Now there is a turn it takes at the very end that does knock it down a few points for me. Mm. But that's the thing with these survival and survival and dramas. How you stick that landing will determine a large part how you of feel about how the you whole feel package, about it. Yeah. So if you are there for if you're there for romance, this this is going to check your boxes. If you're there for survival, I don't know. If you're there for maybe a twist, like something that will you know surprise you, that's not this. Mm-hmm. So for all those reasons, I give it a solid seven extremely handsome surgeons out of ten. <laughs> uh, you said it right when you said it's a date movie, although I don't know if I can go with you. You watch outside of a date movie. It's a great date movie. Yeah. Because it's got like, you know, I mean, it depends on who you're dating, of course. That's true. <laughs> but like, it's got like the, yeah, those aspects of romance and the axis of more dramatic survival and what have mm-hmm. you, not to try and assign things to gender roles or what have you. But <laughs> yeah, I was, I was yeah. tiptoeing around yeah, that yeah, as yeah, I was exactly. talking. But um, I mean, that's, <laughs> that is at least from a production standpoint, clearly what they had in mind when they made mm-hmm. this movie is the point I'm getting at. It's a star and vehicle. I think mm-hmm. to its detriment, because I think they're I think it's one of those films that thinks too little of its own audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact it ends on a note that is the single most cliched thing in romance films. Like it literally is the thing yeah, that yeah. you've seen three thousand uh, times. It's uh, they do it in commercials to parody romance yeah, movies, yeah. you know? It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. You actually uh-huh. did that. When most like I said, the first two acts of this are I thought were darn good. Um and with two leads that are this good, but it was one of those like it dropped it's rating from the third act down where I was just by the end. I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. It also became kind of awkward, didn't it? Yeah, it was just the uncomfortable. The scene was like... It was uncomfortable. Uh, it was like yeah. felt unreal. It felt like, I'm not buying this. <laughs> I was buying the survival stuff. I'm not buying this. Yeah. You know, it I, didn't switch gears very well. Yeah, exactly. It had a real difficulty But just the prologue. I mean, or, just, or just the epilogue, right? Yeah, just the epilogue, yeah, which yeah. is like 20 minutes it long, is a, though. It is so lengthy, it's pretty yeah. much the third act. Yeah, Somebody's watched sure. Return of the King. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but at 104 minutes, each yourself would just at 104 minutes. It still went by at a reasonable pace. Yeah. I think there's easily stuff you could have cut from here, but it's nonetheless. This it's isn't bad. Show, so. and, and and if you are dating someone that happens to be the type of person who really likes romance and wants to watch drama, but nothing too scary, this is probably the right kind of thing because you'll get some pleasure out of this as well. But uh, for me, I can't see returning to this thing. I give it um, six out of ten pieces of delicious mountain lion jerky. Ooh, mm, nice. Tasty. I was kind of like, I wonder what that tastes like. I know. I was I'm like, a, oh, they're eating rotisserie chicken. Let's be real. I'm a shameless <laughs> carnivore. I'm like, give me that. I haven't eaten that animal yet. What does that taste like? <laughs> give me enough spices. I can make it taste good. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what... Uh, Elliot would taste like. <laughs> he could taste like pumpkin pie, but I ain't eating them. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say that myself. Because <laughs> if we crash in the mountains, guess what, bitch? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm already picturing you like in the cartoons now. Like, <laughs> I'm just gonna take off, <laughs> turn into a loin of meat. <laughs> it's like where'd Elliot go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of us.net has been your one stop shop for all things geek for years. But there's a side to them many of you have never heard the subscription side. Subscribe and listen to great podcasts like The Breakfast Pub, The Original Gentleman, and The Watch a Movie With Us series. Head on over to oneofus.net and don't forget your towel.